nothing can stand against the power of our God. You shine in the shadow. You win every battle. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. In Almighty fortress, you go before us. Nothing can stand. Simply. 
Good morning, Calvary. My name is Jared Shepard. I am one of the worship pastors here at Calvary alongside Jeff Blevins, and we are so excited that you are joining us today. Calvary exists to connect people with Jesus on our college campus, in our city, and throughout the world. We are first and foremost a, a church whose focus is on our college campuses here because we believe that that is the next generation of the church. And so we see no greater opportunity before us as a church than to infiltrate these campuses around us and to pour out our lives and our souls into the pursuit of the gospel for those people. And so again, if you are joining us, if you're a guest today, we are so, so thankful and glad that you have decided to join us today. Calvary, or in the words of Christine Kane, uh, is Jesus contemporary or is Jesus traditional? Well, he's both. And so at Calvary, we celebrate both postures of worship, and today we are celebrating our more traditional style of worship, and we are so excited to do that and uh, have a great day of worship planned for you. But if you are a guest, please, please take a moment just to fill out a Connect card so we can learn a little bit more about you, not so that we can bother you and pester you, but just so that we can learn more about you so we can learn how to better love and serve you with our resources. Uh, just a few announcements this morning before we continue in worship. Number one, life group leaders, there's a training on January 24th. You don't need to sign up, but you, you can uh, just come to get more information about being a life group leader. If that's something you're interested in, if you want to begin opening up your home and hosting a group, we would love to give you more information because we believe that is where a significant part of our community and spiritual growth happens is in these life groups. It's one of the most important disciplines we believe that we offer uh, at Calvary. Um, number two, Connect Point is starting on the last Sunday of every month. It will be at 9.45 a.m. and you can scan the QR code to sign up and get more information. There should be a QR code or a link that you can click to uh, take a picture of or click to get more information. Connect Point is just a way for you to learn more about Calvary. If you're a guest and you've been just considering joining Calvary, this is a great place to learn more and see, if, see how this would be a great fit for you and your family. And then last, we, we are beginning a 14-day 14, 14 of prayer initiative that begins tomorrow morning. And so this is really, really important. And so, again, if you are at your laptop or if you're in your home or where you're, wherever you're at right now, we want you to pull out your phone, literally pull out your phone, go to the App Store, whatever that is for you, and go to the Calvary Tuscaloosa app. And you can just search for that in your App Store and search Calvary Tuscaloosa. And that is a great way to stay up to date with everything that is happening here at Calvary. And this is where all of our prayer um, sessions will be sent to each morning. And so to learn more about that, again, download the app, Calvary Tuscaloosa, and then you'll be getting information each and every day. And just a note on that, we are, as a church, in a critical time where, if nothing else, prayer may be the most important thing that we can do. That Christ will be magnified through the church and Christ alone. And that we as a church would acknowledge that no other Messiah besides Christ is sufficient for us to bow the knee to and follow. There is no other anointed king over the world. And that includes the United States. And so we as a church must, must begin to pray for what is our priority as a church. What are the things that matter? Is it nationalism? Is it patriotism? Or is it the gospel of Jesus Christ and that alone? And that's not an attack at anything. That's just an observation. These past 12 months have been an astonishing year for our nation. We as American people, but more so we as evangelicals or followers of Jesus Christ. I think we just need to take this time over these next 14 days to allow the Holy Spirit to intercede in our lives and just pray that he would show us what matters and to give us the boldness and the strength to continue to proclaim the name of Jesus Christ above all else in his church. 
And so I'm going to pray for us, and we're just going to continue in our time of worship today. So, Father, we just give this time to you, and we just say, Jesus, have your way. For you alone deserve all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise above all else. No one else can fit the role that you offer to us, and that is Savior, that is Messiah, that is King, that is Master, and that is Creator. There is no other name, God, and you remind us that your name will not be mocked. And so, Father, we thank you for that. Jesus, we thank you for your love and your compassion and your mercy and your kindness. God, how you invite everyone to experience your love, your tender love, your humble love that you extend to all people. So, Jesus, have your way today, we pray. We love you so much, Father. In Christ's name, amen. Good morning. Today, as we begin our time of worship, I'd like to tell you that our songs were chosen for the beginning of a year, specifically for the beginning of a new year. We will start with a song of praise, How Great Thou Art. Then we will sing a song that's a, a statement of faith, on Christ the solid rock we stand. And then we'll end our first part of worship with a song of prayer, Savior, like a shepherd, lead us. We need you so much during this time. We're thankful to welcome today James McGalliard as our new church organist. We're glad that he is here with us and I know he will be blessing us in the years to come. So let's begin with how great thou art. James, let's start. O oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art.
joy shall fill my heart. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, thou hast bought us, thine we are. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, thou hast bought us, thine we are. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, thou hast bought us, thine we are. Blessed Jesus, bl
Jesus, blessed Jesus, hear, oh, hear us when we pray. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, hear, oh, hear us when we pray. Thou hast promised to receive sinful though we be. Thou hast mercy to relieve us, grace to cleanse and power to free. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, early let us turn to Thee. Blessed Jesus, Burns is going to come now and continue to lead us in worship.
I come to you this morning with a heart that is broken for the way people in our beloved country have conducted themselves this past year. Yes, I am discouraged by the events of this past week, the way people conducted themselves in our capital, Washington, D.C. But I am equally disturbed by the riots in Seattle and many other cities in our country. Now, hear me. I do not expect people who do not have an active, life-changing experience with Jesus to act any other way. Because what we are witnessing in a biblical sense is purely sinful. And let me be clear about what I mean when I say sinful. What we are seeing displayed in our country simply does not reflect the good intentions of God for his world. What we are seeing simply misses the mark of God's intentions. That's what sin means. It means missing the mark of God's good intentions. And so those who are on the left can scream at me, and those who are on the right can shake their heads at me, but my thoughts remain the same. As a nation, we have lost our way. And as a result of that, we have decided here at Calvary, this family of faith, that we would begin this year with a season of prayer. And so as your pastor, I can only speak to you as your pastor, but as your pastor, I'm asking you to get off Facebook. I'm asking you to get off Twitter. And I'm asking you to get on your knees. I'm asking you to allow Jesus, the Father, the Spirit, and the Word of God to redirect 2021. And it begins in the house of God. And so without any hesitation, we have chosen to title this year, Redefining Normal. Wouldn't it be incredible? If normal was that the people of God were on their knees seeking the will of God and the courage to live that will out in our country and frankly throughout the world. Wouldn't that be a new normal? And that is the new normal that we are praying for and we are inviting into our lives. The video that you saw just before asked a question at the end. It says, what if ordinary disciplines of the Christian life were the very mechanisms that God uses to bring out extraordinary results? Prayer is a word we use often. It is so ordinary and common. 
But I will tell you, it is the instrument that God uses to form the minds and hearts and hands of his people. And so last week we began by instructing you how to pray as Jesus taught his disciples. No better place in my mind than to simply look at when the, how Jesus answered the question for the disciples. The disciples said, Lord, will you teach us to pray? Meaning, would you teach us to pray like you pray? There's something extraordinary about the way you pray. We didn't see it in the temple. We haven't experienced it in our homes. Something extraordinary is happening in your life, and we want that. And Jesus said, all right, then when you pray, you pray like this. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from the evil one. Verse 14 and 15, For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your Father in heaven will not forgive you. Would you allow that model prayer to be challenged by these words also from the lips of Jesus, Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 and 20. Again, truly I tell you that if two of you on earth agree about anything, they ask for it, it will be done for them by my Father who is in heaven. For where two or three gather in my name, there I am with them. I'm asking you to get off Facebook, Twitter, social media, and let's together get on our knees. Let's agree together on what is important. Jesus says, as he's teaching them to pray, this is important. When you address God, you call God Father exactly as I have called God Father. When you pray, I want you to call your Father's name and I want you to understand that it is his will to be done on earth. And his will is that our world look like his heaven. And so Christianity is not a religion of everything gets better when you die and go to heaven. It's a call to bring heaven to the earth. And so this morning, I want you to remember the collective impact of people of God praying together. One of some of the most exciting passages in all of the Bible is this sense that we get that people, ordinary people like you and me, ordinary people could actually hear and understand God and begin to move together. So the movement of God starts by hearing from God in prayer, by conversing with God and asking about His will on earth. Start out praying to our Father. Know that it is His kingdom that is coming on earth. And because He is a king, He has a kingdom, He is a king, He can provide all of your needs. He will make provisions for you. Give us, O Father, King of your kingdom, give us our daily bread. And then He moves on simply from that to say, and Father, we know we'll not always get it right. And so would you forgive us when we sin? 
Would you forgive us our sins? And yes, we will be glad, O oh Lord, because of your grace and mercy, because we have learned from you that we also will forgive others. Now, last week, I paused right at this point, and I said that the first part of the model prayer, that is the Father, the Father's character, the Father's kingdom, the Father's provision, and then the Father's forgiveness. All of that is what is happening internally with you. You're changing your mind, your beliefs about who God is and what God does in the world. And what God is actually preparing you to do is to be able to then go out into his kingdom where evil will threaten you. That's an important thing for us to understand. This is a move now from an internal move, what's happening in me, to now I'm beginning to move out. And when I move out into the family business, when I move out into the kingdom, I will carry with me the same forgiveness that my father has extended to me. That's so important. That as Jesus prayed the prayer and concluded the prayer, he reminded them that if you do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive you. I heard a long time ago a wonderful, life-changing phrase. It says this, Withholding forgiveness, that is, holding grudges and being bitter, withholding forgiveness, is like drinking poison and expecting someone else to die. As we begin to move out into the kingdom, the earth, we have to carry the same mercy and grace and forgiveness that we have learned from God our Father. It would be important for all of us right now to just pause. And as you think about those in our world, in your own home, and you say, they don't deserve forgiveness for what they have done. May I remind you, Neither did you deserve forgiveness. And so as you travel on earth, inviting the kingdom of God to come, you will carry with you the same gracious, kind actions of forgiving others. Now, I know because every time I talk about forgiveness, receiving forgiveness, and giving forgiveness, people inevitably ask me one question. Pastor, all right, what do I do if others are unwilling to receive my forgiveness? What, what am I to do if I say forgive me and they refuse to receive it? You do exactly as God does. Because God has offered forgiveness to everyone, and not everyone has received it. And so what do you do? You become very patient. You continue to offer forgiveness, and you wait for forgiveness to be received. God does not force forgiveness on anyone, therefore, neither should we. Remember, this is the model that Jesus is setting up for his own disciples. The Father's character, the Father's kingdom, the Father's provisions, the Father's forgiveness. And now the next move is the Father's guidance. Lead us not into temptation. This is very reflective of the words that we read from Matthew chapter 18, where two or three are gathered, where two or three are seeking the guidance of God. 
you may rest assured that God will lead you. Psalm 23, verses 1 through 3 says, The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. Listen. He guides me along the paths of righteousness. Lead us not into temptation, but lead us in the paths of righteousness. And by the way, James chapter 1 and verse 13 says, When tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does God tempt Anyone. The Greek is fabulous here because it literally says, God can't tempt you. God has no experience with evil. And so Jesus, again, modeling, if you want something extraordinary in your life, as you have seen displayed in mine, then daily you're going to ask, Lord, guide me today. Lead me today in what I say and in what I do. And that, of course, brings us to the final phrase in this model prayer. And that is, deliver us from the evil one. Now, I've, do you find that a bit remarkable? That from the lips of Jesus, he is saying the final thing I want you to remember is that God can deliver you from the evil that is present in his world. We're trying to bring the kingdom of God into the earth, and evil is resisting that. So you will be resisted when you take the Father's words and works out into your world, into your home, into your workplace. Deliver us from evil. Psalm 23 again says, Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Because evil is present in our world. And because from my opening remarks... What we are seeing is evil personified. Evil demonstrated in our world. Jesus was without hesitation and without flinching. He was reminding his disciples that when people tell you there is not an enemy, they are wrong. When people say there's no enemy, there is an enemy. And he is limited to what he can suggest for other people to do. When people say there's nothing out to steal, kill, and destroy, the Bible says different. It says there is a thief who has come to kill, steal, and destroy. When people say there's no war between good and evil in our world, it's just not lining up with the Scripture. Read the Bible and you will find a battleground. And Jesus says, deliver us today as we deliver your good news to those in our world. You deliver us from the evil that would still kill and destroy us. Now, I do need for you to know this from James. If in the name of Jesus you resist evil, evil will flee from you. James chapter 4 and verse 7 says, Submit yourselves then to God. Let's make it fit. Submit yourselves then to the Father who is the King of His kingdom who provides for you, who forgives you, who uh, guides you, and who can deliver you. Submit yourself to God, resist the devil, and the devil, evil, will flee from you. Imagine now, if you will, that every day for the next 14 days, beginning in the morning, 
that we are collectively on our knees and we are seeking the face of a God who can deliver us. Imagine the impact, positive impact, in your life, in your family, and in our world. So the way we're going to conclude today is that I'm going to give you just a bit of information about how you can be a part of this corporate prayer time. What was the vision behind praying together for 14 days? I, I don't say this simply, but the Word of God is the vision behind why God's people pray together. When the early church gathered right after Pentecost, they spent time praying together. Now look, just because we're not going to be physically in the same room together doesn't mean that every day we can't pray together. What a powerful idea. Beginning tomorrow morning, uh, it'll be online on your app. Jared has already told you how to secure the app. You need the Calvary Tuscaloosa app. It will come to you every morning by 6 o'clock in the morning. We are going to attach a, a, a bit of music to that, or you don't have to use that. But we're going to have someone speak to you about what we'd like for you to pray about. And I'll just give you a little hint. I'm the first. And I'm going to ask us to pray together beginning tomorrow morning about getting our eyes in, back into our world off of church life and back into the relationships that we need to develop. Why? To connect people with Jesus. You'll hear that in the morning. And then we want to encourage you to just pray and to think about the topic that we've given you. So that's what's going to happen. It's very simple. You don't have to wake up at 6 o'clock. It'll be in your box whenever you want to utilize it. And so what we'd like to do right now is to just sort of demonstrate what this might be like. And I'll use my words today about the United States of America and how I am heartbroken for it. And so the topic for these next few minutes is going to be our nation. It'll be a little bit awkward via video, but we're going to provide some piano music just to play in the background as you pray for our nation. Maybe you want to just read back through the model prayer. And wherever your mind sort of sticks, that's the Spirit of God holding you there. If it is foremost right now that our nation needs the guidance of God, then just stay right there with that part of the guidance prayer. Lead me not into temptation. And we're going to take about three minutes together. And while Terry plays, I will ask you to pray for our nation.
Father, we confess our need for you above all else. Father, we confess that you are the absolute truth and you are the life. God, we thank you that you don't withhold from us, your children, God. When it comes to your love, when it comes to your compassion, when it comes to your grace and your mercy and your forgiveness. So, Father, would we use that as a model to live our lives and to love others, to pursue mercy, to be lovers of mercy, and extend that out to all that we come in contact with. So go before us this week, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Just a reminder of a couple of things that we talked about earlier in this service. Number one, uh, life group leaders, if you are interested in becoming a life group leader or if you already are, please come to this training on January 24th. Again, you don't need to sign up. Just come be a part of that. Uh, Connect Point is starting on the last Sunday of every month. And so what that is will be a time for those who are interested in learning more about Calvary to get more information and see how you can get plugged in. And that, again, will be the last Sunday of every month at 945. The 14 Days of Prayer Initiative starts tomorrow. Again, we can't reiterate enough. Please, please download the Calvary app. People have spent a tremendous amount of time developing this app specifically for you all And so you can have the most access to the church as possible and stay up to date on the information. So again, you can go to the the App Store and search Calvary Tuscaloosa. Um, We're going to end with a benediction. And so in your rooms, uh, in your homes, wherever you find yourself right now, if you just want to hold your hands out in a posture of receiving, you're welcome to do that. But would we be the people of God who seek first his kingdom? Would we be the people of God who seek first goodness and grace and mercy and extend love? Would we be a people who are slow to speak but quick to seek first the face of God? And to fall on our knees and pray for his intercession, that his Holy Spirit would indwell in us. And that would we be a people who are quick to love all those who are around us, just as Christ taught and commanded us as the people of God to love everyone. And there are no disclaimers on that statement. So, Father, would you send us now in your grace and peace to love and serve all uh, you ultimately and those who are around us. So we love you, Calvary, and we are so thankful that you have, again, decided to join us today. We look forward to being with you in person next week at our normal service times at 8.30 for a traditional service and 11 o'clock for our contemporary service. We'll see you then.
shepherd. Lead, lead us to life with the sovereign arm.